syntiä ja ota asia puheeksi kahden kesken. Mutta ellei hän kuule sinua, niin ota mukasi yksi tai kaksi muuta. Ja ellei hän kuuntele heitäkään, ilmoita asiasta seurakunnalle. Ja jos hän ei tottele seurakuntaakaan, niin suhtaudu hänen kuin pakanaan. Jos syntejään ei pyydä anteeksi, synnit sijoitaan sinun. Ja synnin palkka on ikuinen helvetti. Wonderful. Yes. If you haven't it's, it's, seen, so, sorry, it's available on Elisa Elamus here in yeah. Estonia as well. So. That's what I was going to say. How do people watch it if they haven't seen the? No, but you told us the answer. I didn't know the answer. Um, so yes, do watch that. It's the six episodes in that first season, right? Um. Yeah. So, but I want to start with with you, Maria, and the the more creative genesis of this project because it's you and. Um, co-creator and co-writer Mika. Um, yes. He's not here because he's working on series two. Yes, he yes, is. which is exciting. Um, but where, can you talk a little bit about where this idea came from and what was sort of driving you as writers to yeah. create this? Um, before describing that, I must say something about our backgrounds because yeah. me and Mika, we are old friends. We are friends from childhood. We were Grow, we grew up in a small town, which was actually like this fictional Varjakka town in our series. So um, we used to this strong religious sect called Lestadianism. It's not uh, the only sect which which is dealing with the for, forgiving or uh, pressure of forgiving. And it's not the only religious group where it's a big sin to have birth control. And it's not maybe the only sect in the world where the looking at TV is a sin. But it was familiar to us, to me and Mika. So it was very natural to start to create a story which was based on this community. And a few years ago, a female journalist published a book of a girl who was um, abused in this society and the guilty persons never were taken to trial or to judge. They were never punished because uh, all, all things had to be agreed. So uh, there were these kind of ideas and these kind of discoveries that led us to uh, write the crime story. And then we had these two two characters, Lauri and Sanna, who we wanted to have their with their family dramas too. So it's maybe not that pure crime story, it's also family drama. So we wanted to bring this story to the surroundings which were really familiar to us. No, and I think the surroundings, I mean, it becomes a character in itself. I mean, you couldn't set this story really anywhere else other than this kind of... No, community. I think uh, these surroundings are actually the part of the story yeah. and somehow the Varjakka village is mm -hmm. one, uh, one character maybe yeah. in the story. And then where did you pitch it? Did you bring it to Ilka first? Or? Well, actually our case was that uh, we were not experienced drama writers and we decided to try <laughs> try out what we 
could do. So we wrote six episodes all by ourselves. We took the risk and it took more or less one year, one and a half year. We had some other projects and jobs to do. And then we brought that six episodes to Ilka and it was a big relief and a great moment when he said that he likes it mm. and then he brought it to Elisa Vihde and it was very smoothly going on okay. after that. It was, I think, okay. two months that but we got the green light. But that's very unusual to go ahead and spend the time to write a whole season yes, <laughs> and six episodes without knowing if it's going to get made, if anybody's going to like it, if anybody's going to give you the money to make it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but actually it was also a big joy. We were really enjoying it okay. and somehow we got the intuition that there's something original something in this yeah. story and it was really like a big freedom in writing. Okay. And Ilka, when you... These crazy, two crazy writers land on your, on your desk, <laughs> this six episodes already written... What was your first reaction? Well, of course, I knew both Mika and okay, Maria from yes. the long time. And that we helps. had been working on a feature <laughs> film script okay. uh, before, actually quite intensively. And unfortunately, that project just didn't take off as we hoped for. So uh, all the scenes was kind of, uh, how do I say, plan B, because the first project didn't didn't work out, and uh, and and um, unfortunately, how Maria describes it, so it was not as easy to get it uh, in production. <laughs> oh, easy, easy. <laughs> yes. uh, there were very many no's when we were presenting it, and um, also the fact that um, uh, Mika was not an experienced uh, f- drama director, mm-hmm. so he was a well-known documentary film director, but he hadn't made a, made a fiction uh, film or series yet. Didn't kind of support the idea of making this. The uh, um, budget we were planning for this also was a problem because my background is in uh, feature films. Okay. I had made a uh, drama series back in 95 and uh, then changed. you know yeah. in between 23 <laughs> feature films and then coming into that world where I thought I would not come back again ever so was a, was a bit problematic because I, I I thought that if you know we want to make a quality series then it has to also look and sound quality and it has to be you know something cinematic and uh, that was of course another hurdle there to, to 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 cross but of course you know thanks to elisa so the whole our industry and the landscape of audiovisual productions in finland changed very uh, rapidly and uh, we they believed also in the same story they believed in in mika and they believed in 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 my uh, ability to produce quality and uh, we had the sufficient uh, uh, financing to the production and the rest you know you can see yeah. on Elisa Elamus. And Laura um, I think a lot of people here will know a bit about Elisa it's a telecommunications company and then Elisa Vide is the Video on demand. Yeah, we part. are the entertainment service okay. of the telco. And you're headquartered in Finland. You also have an arm here in Estonia now. You also do some work in China and other yes, places. I think we are number one in as a, as a TV operator in Estonia as well, and and sort of leading IPTV OTT service in Finland. Okay. Because yeah, I noticed when I my phone switched over to the Elisa phone network when I got here. So it's like you're everywhere. It's great. Um, what attracted you to all the sense? What, what, why did it make a good fit for Elisa Vide? I think for us it was also un- unusual that uh, the project was in, in such a ready stage. Yeah. <laughs> we usually come on board on uh, the de- development stage, so already from the concept and then sort of developed together. But in, uh, in this case, e- even though there were a lot of notes, but the, the scripts were mm. really ready and you could immediately see that there's something special about the project mm. and uh, uh, luckily we had we had already sort of been developing and sort of producing two other international level series that had uh, like 
distribution MGs. And uh, my colleague Alan from London was able to sort of um, convince Sky Vision that this is a good project that, that they should, even though it's fully in Finnish and, and Finnish, really Finnish story, that they also saw the potential. And luckily now they've, they've sold the series to over 30 countries, mm -hmm. uh, in, including, um, I think it's the first Finnish uh, drama series that will air on uh, Walter Presents. Channel 4. Ah, okay. I didn't and also sold to UK, um, I mean US. Yes, and UK. Okay, that's pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and did you sort of, know, I don't know how deeply, you're not like a Netflix algorithm based uh, service, but how did you think your audience would react to a show like this? Did it sort of tick some boxes that you knew crime might do well, you knew a strong female character might do well? Were there things about it that you thought your audience might be drawn to? Of course, those things, but I, I also think that the sort of it's so local and so real. Mm. It's sort of recognizable uh, characters local. from that region. And also I think the Lestadians uh, are a sort of interesting, um, sort of not a cult, but sort of group for the rest of the Finns who, because it's a bit sort of, you don't really understand how mm. it works. and. And uh, the books written about the subject have been really popular, and, mm. and I think it sort of intrigues people. Okay. And Chris, when did Tasca Film come on board, and, and why was it a good project for you? Well, it's um, of course thanks to Ilka because our cooperation with uh, Ilka Matila goes back to year 2002, and during that time we have made I think four to five feature films together. Whoa. Okay. And. Uh, <laughs> And it, what was interesting for Estonia and um, side, of course, the story, but also the whole concept of making quality. I don't know even if we can say TV because it's, a, let's say, miniseries or non-theatrical. Because I don't know, are you are you TV? You are not probably TV. We made it mainly for you, so it is. Well, anyway, um, well, it's TV beat, so yeah. let's say TV. We call it TV. So so anyway, <laughs> it, to, to make a good quality. Um, TV production because I feel that in Estonia there is still budget-wise uh, quite some difference between um, miniseries and feature films. Though of course there is everything, but uh, but uh, um, and, and so 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 for us it was like we approached it really o o like a feature film quality production. So we did the way we would do a theatrical thing. Um, it, time-wise and e every way. Uh, the second interesting thing is that until then we had mainly done with Ilka that the film is uh, shot in Estonia so and usually post-produced in uh, Finland because uh, for many years also CGI and, and all the post facilities it seemed that Finland had much better uh, service to provide. So this was actually the other way around that was a good and interesting thing for us that, that we have come to the level that we can provide uh, post-production uh, uh, services. Because it shot in Finland completely. Absolutely. And then did post completely here? Uh, or no, um, no uh, 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 CGI. And now with the second series, we will have also, we are more into the sound works. I think the most important uh, element, an Estonian element in this is the editor, Tabet Tasuja who is a great artist and probably one of the best uh, editors for the time being in the whole Nordic area. So, uh, you know, the human uh, uh, resources mm. from Estonia were the, such as, you know, Chris Tusk and uh, Tasuja were the most crucial for this project. And just quickly, the third point that was interesting is that we, uh, Ilk and I, uh, made the first uh, uh, feature film to use the Film Estonia incentive, the rebate incentive uh, that was when it started. And now actually it was a possibility of using that incentive for series, mm. not, not for a feature film. So that was a new thing and also using that incentive for post-production uh, only. And it worked out quite nicely. What's, what percentage do you, can you get with the incentive? Or? It, uh, the percentage Depends. is between 25 and 30. Okay. Can uh, I add here that we, of course, the sort of whole growth of Finnish drama has been also possible thanks to the Finnish cash rebate yeah. by Business Finland. So that's up to 25% of the 
cost in, cost in Finland spent. Okay. Great. Um, Mary, I want to come back to you and ask, you know, you had written these six episodes sort of in isolation, your dream episodes. Once it went into production or, you know, even development with these official partners, how, did, did a lot change in those scripts or like seeing it brought to life completely? Mm. Is it pretty close to what you had envisioned back then? Well, actually, I think the hardcore of the story was really what we were okay. planning. Yeah. So uh, the changes were strengthening the drama. Mm. Uh, they were somehow sharpening the characters, uh, sharpening the structure. And so I think the basic, the core was there. Okay. And especially, you know, this area, were you on the set? Or, you know, sometimes writers are far miles away from whatever we're shooting. Sometimes you might be there because it's a place, you know. Uh, I went there um, like five, six, seven days okay. to follow shooting. It was good. <laughs> she was allowed. Uh, well, okay. actually, actually, uh, Mary was more than present on set because we were shooting at her home. One of the main locations was... Was at home and There's uh, some authenticity. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and it sounds like a really silly little production because part one of the locations was my grandfather's farm. So so so, so we had to take use of everything we had there. Wow. Um, should we see a clip? Maybe should we see a, a clip of the maybe that church scene that sort of sets up the. Yes, our yeah. main characters go yeah. first time to the prayers of this community. And Lauri, the male character, is not their first time, of course. But after a long 10 years pause, and Sanna is their first time in her life. And now they see the universe of Varjakka. Great, let's see it. Hey, Varo. Onko sinulla lupa ajatella omilla aivoillasi? Uskallatko kyseenalaistaa opit, joita sinulle tuputetaan päivästä toiseen? Saatko osallistua uskonnollisiin tapahtumiin sen verran, kun itse tahdot, vai painostetaanko sinua? Vapauta itsesi hengellisestä väkivallasta. Ajattele, herää. Täällähän on paljon Jumalan lapsia koolla. Oikea sankka todistajien pilviä. Sinä siinä penkissä. Olet varmasti järkyttynyt. Sinä taatusti ihmettelet, että miksi Jumala antaa tällaista tapahtua. Mutta se on sielun vihollinen, joka laittaa sinut epäilemään. Mutta minä voin lohduttaa sinua tässä ja nyt. Jumalan tahto on totteutunut, vaikka sinun on sitä vaikea käsittää. Ja ajattelepa sinä huono kulukia. Jumala koettelee meitä ja meidän uskomme aina. Vai onko täällä teistä joku, jota ei yhtään ole koetellut? Kyllä minä ainakin omalta kohdaltani voin sanoa, että monesti on tullut koeteltua. Aina tulee kompastuksia ja koettelemuksia ja syntiin lankeemisia, jotka rasittaa uskuamme. Äiti Mariakin tunsi varmasti piston sydämessään, kun hänen poikansa riippui ristillä. Mutta se on niin ihmeellinen tuo Jumalan aikomus. Hän antoi Marjalle voimia kestää kaiken. Jumalan armoa on se, että tässä valtakunnassa annetaan aina kaikki synnit anteeksi. Ei tipottamaan kaikki. Ja ne myös uskotaan anteeksi. Mutta jos me emme jaksa antaa toisille anteeksi, niin miten meidän silloin käy? Mene Jumalamme. Ei anna meille anteeksi myöskään. Mutta ajattelepa sinä siellä pienen paikalla. Sinä saat tehdä parannuksen tässä ja nyt. Pane synnit syntinä pois. Tee sinäkin parannus ja usko synnit anteeksi. Synnit anteeksi annettu. Jeesuksen nimessä. Kaikki synnit anteeksi annettu Jeesuksen nimessä ja veressä. Jeesuksen nimessä ja veressä. Rakkaat sisaret ja veljet, jaksatteko te vielä antaa minullekin 
minun syntini anteeksi. Jeesuksen nimessä ja sovintoperheessä kaikki synnit anteeksi annettu. Virsi 103. <laughs> wow, indeed. Uh, what were the biggest logistical challenges of shooting this project? There must have been a few. Well, uh, of course, you know, the main locations are about 1,000 kilometers north of this place now. So it's uh, uh, the and main logistics. not a place that people shoot a lot of films? And no, the, the, there are films being shot up there, mm -hmm. and there's a film commission. But uh, our locations were not exactly in the city of Oulu, but mm -hmm. outside of it. And uh, the main logistical problem probably was uh, that we don't, there's a lack of uh, 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 professional crews up there. So we had to bring everybody from the south there. And uh, that's why we, for the time being, are educating people there. We have a kind of further educational program which we uh, organized together with the city of Oulu to uh, train, to train, uh, up young, train crew, young, people. young people to, to become filmmakers. Great. Nice. An added Try to benefit. tackle that yes. problem. <laughs> yeah. And Laura, when the show came out, what was the initial response from viewers? Well, of, uh, the original series are usually all, all, always sort of the most viewed when mm -hmm. they come, but this has been a really a, a big hit for us, like all, all time. One of the big, biggest titles for us, and the feedback feedback has been really good. Like mm. people sort of pinched it really fast and and really loved the loved the show. And also the feedback from the Lestadian com community was great because mm. even though they are not allowed to watch TV, they can watch the online services. Oh, <laughs> a loophole! <Yeah. laughs> wow. so they sort of approved this because they saw that it it's sort of genuinely describes the life of the of the people wow. maybe some kind of new wave new wave of conservatism is around us and i think we made some kind of uh, discovery of that somehow yeah. it's maybe quite yeah it's not topical accrued. not just in finland yeah um and then when was the decision made to do season two when did you all decide to do that actually that was done quite early i think the uh, the um, contract the agreement for uh, season two uh, scripts was signed before even the production agreement for season one was signed. Okay. So, <laughs> so the quality of Marius and Mika's writing was so uh, convincing that uh, that Elisa could uh, kind of take the risk and uh, yeah. uh, wow. kind of kind of agree upon the season two. Of course, the production decision was taken much later, but the scripts were already right. there, so. That enables us to move into production already now in January because the scripts are available. Okay, and Maria, you and Miko, um, how how did you approach season two? That's well, quite a different. Well, we wanted to create totally different crime story. Yeah. The village the is there. Same... The universe, the universe yeah. of Varjakka, which is fictional, of course, that is there. Some of the characters are there, mm -hmm. but the crime story is totally new and. We are actually going back in time to the year 99. Okay. And was it harder to write season two than season one? Well, uh, 
what would I say? <laughs> it was more difficult and more easy <laughs> in, in some suspects. Uh, the first one was like playing and creating something new and discovering, can we write TV series? Oh, maybe we can. Mm. Second season was easier in the way that we had learned something, but uh, somehow it was as a process more difficult and uh, it's a little bit difficult to analyze why it was so, but um, Maybe also that uh, being conscious of the structure somehow made us, um, I don't know, there were some limits that were not uh, there mm. when we wrote the first season. Right. I'm sorry, cannot explain it <laughs> more <Yeah>. precise. <laughs> Um, and how, what is the writing process like between the pair of you? Do you sit in a room together? Uh, we you? usually sit in the same room. We use the online application Writer Duet, which is very nice. We can, we actually write the same scene, and we can go there. And if other one Mika writes bad stuff, me never. But <laughs> you know, I go and correct. No, I'm joking. Yeah. We we can talk and quarrel and joke and. Um, everything at the same time as we write and then we can be in different cities of course because of this online system so it depends where we are okay interesting and can any what can you tell us about season two so it's going to shoot in january i think i told enough that's it okay <laughs> In terms uh, of production, well, anything notable? Maybe uh, maybe I mentioned a few words about it. It <laughs> takes place 15 years before, yeah. and the uh, main story tells uh, the uh, one of the um, background stories of one of the, the uh, side characters of uh, season, season one. Okay. So uh, it's uh, the concept is that we are not continuing from where we left the audience in mm. season one, but it's it's another yeah. other story, but taking in another time in the but in the same place. And do you think if somebody hasn't seen season one they can just sort of jump in with this? Because it sounds different. Definitely. You know? yeah. Definitely yeah. can, but I think there will be it will be interesting to maybe watch the season one after that. Yeah. Okay. They can be watched separately. But the, uh, the the idea, yeah, the idea is that that uh, this is one uh, work of art, the all all seasons together, and it can be watched either separately, but uh, the whole of it makes actually mm. gives the best best sort of uh, idea about it. Okay. Um, we have another clip, so it's. Can somebody tell us what the clip is? Maybe. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, this is more about the main character, Lauri, who lives in the lousy motel in the Varjakka. And about Lauri, I must say that he's married to a guy. And now this guy has come to Varjakka to meet him. And Lauri's mother comes uh, surprisingly now there. maistamaan meille juustokeittua. Joo, mikä ettei. Kiitos. Joo, no me katsotaan.
Mitä toi oli? Mikä? Sä et uskata nyt sanoa, kuka mä oon. <tuh> toi todellakaan ollut oikea hetki. Sä häpeät meitä. En mä voinut sanoa mitään, kun äiti puhui just isästä, että sä halus tavata mut. Sitä suuremmalla syyllä sä olisit voinut esitellä mut äidille. Voitais mennä sinne yhdessä. Sen pitää ehkä tavata ne itse kunnolla. No mene sinne! Puhu niiden kanssa. Kerro niille, mitä sä ajattelet. Lopeta! Lopeta sinä sen piileskely! En mä piileskele! Just sä valehtelit äidille. Sä, sä pelkäät sun lestaa vanhempias. Joo, juokse karku! <tos> So, I thought I'd see if there's any questions from the audience out there. Anybody question, got a question about the All the Sins? Success? How they did it? Great. Mm. Yeah, it was not the location which was the main inspiration, it was one of them. Uh, we decided in the very beginning that Lauri would be gay because it's easier to describe the conservatism of this community when you have the main character who is in a sexual minority and it's easier to, well, we wanted Lauri to come there back and to confront things that he has been rid of for a few years. And this is something personal that we also gave some things of our own lives to this story, as you said about Bridge. Uh, I have been an outcast in my own childhood family, so there, there are some uh, lines exactly in Laura's mother uh, vo uh, mouth that I could give from my own life. And also Mika has had some experiences that we, we can use. So uh, Sanna is quite the opposite. She's sexually quite free, middle-aged, single mother. So we wanted two different main characters to play with the drama in this little village. Great. Any, okay, question? Uh, well, of course, Mika is, the director is living up in north in Oulu, so the distance is quite, quite long, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think during the past 20 years, so, so uh, uh, we've been working so closely with Chris Taska's uh, uh, company and, and the Estonian uh, uh, professionals, film film professionals, that uh, traveling is is not actually the the, the issue anymore. Uh, also, the communication has, is. I I I personally think that it wouldn't be wouldn't have been any easier if he would have done the post in Finland. Uh, as we had, you know, as we decided to do it here, and uh, the, in fact, our collaboration for season two is even extended from season one. So, so we are we are doing even more here, and also a uh, uh, part of our crew up in the north will come from Estonia. So, so there's be even kind of more collaboration there. Great. It, it seems and to then me. Thank you. Piret Tibot and, and Film Estonia who have been <laughs> sort of helpful to enable this collaboration. Just want to add that actually there really is so much uh, interconnection between Finland and Estonia during the during the last decades, and 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 distance-wise, of course, it doesn't it's not a big difference anymore. 
one one little step further from Helsinki to come to Tallinn. And I think also my impression has been that that both way uh, Estonians are always very happy. To, well, I'm very happy to visit at least Helsinki always, and 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 uh, vice versa. Uh, and and of course. Um, Maybe also still something that I think in the end we are pretty much the same people, the same nation. It's, it's maybe like a little bit different histories, like maybe East and West Germany or something. <laughs> okay. Um, That's a political <laughs> statement. <laughs> maybe this is too political. Uh, maybe my last question will be slightly political as well um, in a different way. Um, you know, we've heard a lot about the success of Nordic noir. You know, we talked about the killing, the bridge. Um, do you think that term is over? Would you consider this show Nordic Noir? Is that an insulting term now? Is it helpful? What do you think about that term? I think in, in this series there's a lot of light. Yes, yeah. that's true. So it's not me, like dark, visual. snowy, yeah. it's summery. And warm, warm. Yeah. It's not cold and dark, but it's warm and, and light. Nordic light, mm. a new genre. Maybe we have given a little bit our own flavor to Nordic noir. That's maybe the way to put it. Uh, our main characters like each others. They are not enemies. They do not fight a lot. Uh, they are colleagues who work together without their egos between them. Yeah. So I think that's maybe a little difference. And also, uh, we don't have female young corpses. We have old men killed. <laughs> Uh, I, I also think I also think that uh, uh, well, all the scenes was awarded uh, the uh, Nordic Film and TV Funds uh, uh, award for the, the best uh, and yes for the for the uh, best, best screenplay year. yeah and it last last week it was also uh, nominated to uh, all categories in 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 Finnish Golden Venla the mm. TV Academy's uh, 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 awards. Actually, got six awards. Got two uh, female main uh, uh, actors oh. as, as awarded, <laughs> and uh, that's a, that's the highest number actually of all the all the contenders. Uh, this also, I think, proves that this show is not only about the crime. Yeah. There's a lot of other uh, meaningful subject matters mm -hmm. there. It, it deals with such and such. Issue, issues that are universal and uh, the crime story only gives a kind of framework mm. to all these these other subject matters. Yeah, having seen it, I can agree with that. So remind us, people can watch it on Elisa Vide in Finland. And then what's the name of the service here? Elisa? Uh, Elisa Elamas, is it Hoopi, the, the Estonian uh, Esvot service? And on, of course, around the Europe in, in different services. Okay. And channels. And do we know and when Walter it's going to be on Channel Four in the UK? Actually, I'm not sure when it's okay. going to air. We'll ask Walter. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Walter will present. Yeah, Walter will present it. Um, thank you so much for being here and telling us more about the show. And can't wait to see season two.